Colin Chapman has a lot to answer for. His take on how to make cars go quickly not only ensured his creations did very well on the world's racetracks, it also ensured that his company, Lotus, made a butt ton of fun, fast, light cars. They still do. However, the road car that Colin will likely be remembered for is the Lotus 7, a car that not only, in the right circumstances, is brilliant, but has inspired countless others. You and I could name countless companies that have their own take on the Lotus 7, Caterham, Tiger, Westfield, you name it. But how's about one that's taken the concept and made it all Dutch? This is Donkervoort. This is the Donkervoort D8 GTO, the latest car from the mind of Joop Donkervoort and his team. Joop's first car, the Super 7, was introduced in 1978 and it was his take on the Lotus 7. It was small, lightweight and by all accounts a good giggle. The S7 eventually turned into the D8. The D8 steadily evolved to have more power, turbochargers and less weight thanks to extensive use of carbon fibre. Donkervoort took a D8 racing and managed to take the top spot at the Dubai 24 hours. Rather than rest on its laurels though, it took all it had learned and applied it to the GT and GTO, the most extreme Donkervoort yet. So the car we're driving right now isn't your average D8 GTO. This is the prototype car. This is car number one, as it were, Genesis. There's no disguising its Lotus-esque looks. There's a big phallic bonnet up front. The seats are pretty much over the rear axle and of course there is no room for anything. However, that big willy bonnet is needed because it hides a two and a half litre turbocharged five cylinder engine from Audi. The same one you get in the RSQ3, the old TT RS and the old RS3. In those cars, it produced anywhere from 300 to 350 horsepower. In this, it produces 380. Now, when you bear in mind that this thing weighs 695 kilos, that gives it a power to weight ratio of 546 brake per tonne. That's more than the original Bugatti Veyrons. <laughs> That, in turn, means it is blisteringly fast. 0-62 takes 2.8 seconds and its top speed is 168 miles an hour. To get a car to go that quickly and be that light though, you need to make a few sacrifices. The engineering in this thing is absolutely staggering. This isn't just a Lotus 7 knockoff. No, it's like a Lotus 7 has mated with a Mac or a Transformer. Everything is carbon fibre to keep the weight down as low as possible. And then the technology in here, in order to save weight but keep it safe, is incredible. The doors can take a one and a half ton impact and the latches on the bonnet are the same you'll find in the American rocket industry. But to keep the weight down even further, Donkervoort didn't stop at that. They did without any creature comforts and by creature comforts I mean things like power steering, ABS, servo assisted brakes. So basically to get this thing to turn or stop, you're battling friction like a proper old school car. There is one concession to modern driving. There is traction control, though I'm told that's only for use in the wet. I mean, seriously, who'd want traction control in a lightweight car with 380 horsepower in the dry? Pansies, that's who. more things to mention. Not only is its 0 to 62 time crazy fast, its 0 to 124 time is 8.6 seconds, slightly less than it takes a diesel Audi A6 to reach 62 miles an hour. Then there's the rarity of the thing. 
Donkervort's initial run of DA GTOs is 25 cars, and each of them will set you back nearly £100,000. So, it's rare, incredibly fast, has no safety net, and it's worth more than most people will earn in four years. Right. Stepping out of the prototype version, number one, and into this, which is, well, a brand spanking new road car, the difference is, well, the differences are massive. The interior is much more shiny. In the prototype, there were two motor traction control. In this one, there's five. There's a sport button. There's a launch button. It's all carbon fibery and beautiful. Also, the turbo has changed. In the other car, well, the noise was just epic, a big, angry growl. But in this, when you put your foot down, the turbo screams. It's a bit quick too. Also, the gearbox is a lot easier to use. I think it might be because that one was a bit abused. And the handling, the suspension setup's been tweaked as well. So it's a little bit more driver friendly. Whereas the prototype was something of a monster, if you poked it a little bit just in the wrong place, it would let you know that it was about to rip your face off. With this, on the road at least, it's nicely balanced. It's very much focused on letting the driver have a really good time, but not molly coddling them. I spoke to one of the guys from Donkervort and they say their goal with this car is to create something that you can enjoy on a country road or you can enjoy in the mountains or on a track and you know that you're the one doing all the work. The car's just there to make sure that you have the most fun possible. They wanted to get every single aspect of that right from the pleasingly heavy steering with amazing feedback and then of course the engine which is epic. The performance Donkervort has managed to extract from this engine is um, nothing short of astounding because it weighs so little and you get this onslaught of noise and the torque pushes you forward and when you're on song the turbo screams begging you to go faster. You get the wind rushing into the cabin and you do feel like you're going a lot faster than you actually are. We're currently going at around 80 kilometers an hour but it feels much, much quicker than that. What Donkervort's managed to do is they've managed to combine the best bits of Caterham and Lotus and a little bit of Audi RS. Because you get the agility you find in a Caterham, you get the balance and the comfort you get in a Lotus, and then you get the maddening power of a TT RS. And at the same time in with that is a little bit of race car, that little bit of manicness that makes you want to hold on but push harder, corner harder, and discover the limits of its grip, which are, pleasingly, hard to find. And there's a special reason for having one of these over something a little bit more British. This has pushed the game forward. It's all carbon fibre, it's all lightweight. The handling is simply sublime, but you get brutal power that doesn't bite you. In higher power catrums, you get the impression that one wrong twist of the ankle and you're going to go in lots of different directions all at once. With this, you don't. You respect it, it will respect you. When it comes down to it, the DA GTO isn't about simply making the fastest or the best. There's more to it than carbon fibre and big power. It's the passion behind it. The same passion that goes with every low volume car manufacturer. They want to make a car that's truly theirs, that has their own stamp on it that'll be seen as one of the targets. Look at Pagani, there's more there than big numbers. There's soul, creativity, and in a weird way, a little bit of love. And it's the same here. This isn't simply 7 Plus. This is Joke Donkervort's baby. When he built the first Donkervort, the S7, in the late 70s, he set about on a journey not to create just another lineup of Lotus 7 clones, but to push the boundary further, further even than Caterham will go. And let's face it, Caterham is the official Lotus 7 fan club. Yoke made his dream car, and we're really lucky that he'll share it with us. <laughs> <laughs>